Hello everyone, we're here in London at the Computing Conference 2018 and I'm joined by Anastasios Bakaukas, who's one of the researchers here and we'll be doing some interviews with participants, researchers, speakers and you're the first of the day. So okay. how are you so far? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, first of all, for a great event so far. And thank you. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> very nice. Now, you are active in the field of optical solutions in yes. unconventional computing. And That's that was right, a term yes. that really fascinated me. So please explain, what is that? Yeah, um, mainly unconventional computing is uh, an area of science that seeks to find alternative ways to perform computing than the traditional. Okay. Just to explain a bit, uh, that we consider the traditional way of performing computing to be the current technology, the one which is based on electricity and electrical pulses right. to carry out data. Uh, in the field of unconventional computing, there are two major branches right now. Uh, the one is quantum computing. Ah, we know that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's a very famous topic in, uh, and very hot topic mm. in science right now. The other branch, which is equally promising, is uh, the one which takes advantage of optical uh, communications technology, optical fibers, right. and uh, instead of uh, electric pulses to carry out data, in that sort of sector we have uh, what we call the solitons, which are Sorry? The, solitons. the solitons. Okay. Yes, which are nothing more than a fancy name for just an optical pulse, okay. uh, which uh, exhibits some very fascinating properties, uh, particle-like properties, uh -huh. and uh, the whole aim of all of us involved in that area is uh, to find ways of taking advantage of these fascinating properties of these optical pulses to perform computing. So you have within unconventional computing, one branch is uh, the quantum technology that we hear a lot about. There are many others, but okay. the two most promising ones right now, according to current research, is quantum computing and the optical uh, technology. Why do we need that? Uh, because um, it's a very acknowledged fact right now that the current technology has reached its limit. Okay. Um, to put a very long story uh, short, uh, we cannot pack any more chips in uh, the same millimeter, uh, square millimeters uh, area. Okay, so we have reached a limit. Yeah. Uh, less chips per square millimeter it means uh, less powerful uh, processors um, and the speed more or less has remained the same for a number of years. Okay, so it's so a performance issue. Yes, it's a performance issue. Actually, we have reached a limit, as I said, with this current technology. Hmm. Eventually, we'll need to think about switching to another. And that's where you come in? Yes. And what are you researching at the moment? Uh, Right now, I have more or less completed the theoretical uh, okay. background of uh, unconventional computing with optical fibers. Uh, it's just a matter of taking it into the lab, really, mm -hmm. uh, as we speak. Uh, so, from the theoretical stand, uh, this uh, technology has proven in court, because nothing is fully proven mm -hmm. unless we have a fully working device. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but at the theoretical sector it has proven its ability to perform computation. So it should be able to be used? Yes. Uh, as I said, the next natural step is to take the theory and apply it into uh, a lab uh, so you can come up eventually with a device that is fully workable. And that's the moment you're at now? That's where I stand at the oh, moment. That's, that's yes. very exciting to actually yeah. take it to the practical stage. I, it is absolutely and uh, also it's making it more exciting to, to know that what you're currently researching mm. might be the technology uh, eventually used, widespread used, in 20 years from now or 15 years from that now. That will actually replace the way we used to work That's at the right, moment. Yeah. And if we look at the laboratory, as you mentioned, what can we see there? Are there actually fibers or is it light or what will happen? It is, uh, to put it plainly, uh, we have substituted already the copper wires, mm -hmm. which are transmitting uh, the electrical pulses with optical fibers okay, yes. of a particular type. Uh, I'm not going to get into uh, more details in that because sure. I'm not so sure how many of our viewers <laughs> will be able to understand They'll these, need to read the research. These yes, yes yeah. these details. Uh, the fact is that uh, copper wires are substituted with optical fibers. Okay. 
uh, electrical pulses are substituted with uh, solitons, which are optical pulses. We carry out as normal data down mm -hmm. these media and we so perform computation. there are nothing changes, it's just the way they are uh, transported. Yes, more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, there are differences in the sense that uh, while it is easy to destroy an electrical mm -hmm. pulse, it is not easy okay. to so destroy an secure. optical pulse yeah. because uh, light is persistent as right. a medium to transfer data. Um, but we find ways around to perform computation with these optical pulses. Uh, so you're normal. replacing the wiring? Replacing the wiring, re replacing uh, the medium by which we transmit uh, data. It's going to be optical signals. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we achieve really is absolute fast mm -hmm. in what we are doing. We are talking about the highest speed in nature. Wow. We can go any higher than that. And that is the and speed of light. That is the speed of light, exactly, down an optical fiber. And uh, with the assistance of a few tricks we employ within the medium, mm -hmm. uh, we can also have uh, light entrapped, so we can realize memory. Ah, right. uh, in other words, we can build the whole computer exactly as we know it right now, yeah. but in another completely different domain. It sounds a little bit like magic, actually yeah. trapping light, so you can, you can save it. Yeah. Probably uh, I've given all the good news so mm -hmm. far, uh, one bad news. Uh, is this. Uh, we are facing, uh, probably those who are going to see the interview might think, uh, okay, why don't we already have yeah. one device working uh, with this technology? Uh, the sad answer to that is, is one of these points in scientific history that science doesn't quite correlate with business. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, if we go uh, back 80 years, mm -hmm. we will find out that the first ever computer was acknowledged to be ENIAC, yes. a computer that was filling up a whole floor exactly. in the a huge skyscraper. Things, yes. Yeah, exactly. This model doesn't exist anymore. Uh -huh. This model for business was acceptable back in these days because right. we didn't yeah. have anything prior to that. So it was the best there was. Yes. Yeah. But right now we have mobile phones. Mm -hmm. The next device which is about to come into the market for the business sector must match these dimensions and right. these capabilities straight out. So they have the demands, yes. Yes. There's not going to be uh, a customer accepting anything less than that. Mm -hmm. So for us the challenge is double, really, right. as it was 80 years ago. You're not the first anymore. Yes, yeah. we're not the first anymore. We have to follow an already well-established technology. Right. So the major challenge is not only to make the system work, mm -hmm. but actually minutarize it down to the level of a mobile phone before it's actually reaching the market. So you need to match the current status exactly. before you can actually release it. Yeah. Is there a chance over time that that will actually happen? Uh, my forecast is that in probably 15 to 20 years from now we will have one device of that technology yeah. um, in our power. Ready to use. Yes. That's, that's not that long, 15 no. to 20 years. Mm. No, it's not that long. So the progress is going quite and, fast. Uh, we might have something else which is, to me personally, uh, even more exciting. Mm. We might have the current internet infrastructure. Yes. Uh, forming a huge, really global computer's hardware. Okay. In other words, we're not going to have only optical fibers mm -hmm. transmitting data from one place of the Earth to another, yeah. but also this optical fiber will be an active device which yeah. performs computation as the data are transmitted. So it's, it's an actual infrastructure that's constantly yeah. working. The Internet's infrastructure has the potential to become the hardware yeah. for a global and th then wha what will happen? What will we notice in our daily lives if that is the case? Yeah, uh, one very simple example is this. Uh, as you send an SMS, mm -hmm. this SMS is encrypted. Right. Uh, the decryption takes place at the receiving end. Mm -hmm. If the infrastructure of the Internet becomes a large global computer's hardware, the decryption will take place on the fly as your data so it's uh, even flying to the destination. faster. So it's almost even faster, simultaneously yeah. the exactly. EU action that... And we can perform other uh, computations on the data. We can perform digital signal processing 
sort of computation, uh, validation and verification, algorithms can run. So it's just speeding all up all that on the fly. All the processes. Yes. Well, that sounds like a a wonderful situation. And that's also Hopefully in 15 yes. to 20 years, do you think? Uh, 15 to 20 years is my estimate, yes. Okay. It, it might take slightly longer than that, depending on how willing uh, the, co the current companies, uh, the current big companies are to put some money into right, this. Right, so you'll need partnerships in this area yes, as well. Yes. yes. And is that c coming along at the moment? Uh, Coming quite nicely Good, along, yeah. yes. Uh, a lot of money has been put into uh, the direction of quantum mm -hmm. computing, and sl slowly but steadily, companies start uh, looking the other way as well. Coming to acknowledge how fascinating the other way is well, as well. That the sounds good. And in a more g general way, wha where do you see computing as a whole going over the next couple of years? Uh, my forecast is computing. A uh, future is going to be paved with a lot of challenges, mm. but I if you ask my personal opinion, thank God for that because what we computer science enjoy the most is to meet challenges. So right, so you need researchers then? Yes, okay, exactly. Good. Um, I want to wish you a very lovely conference. I hope you're having fun thank and will be much. over the next the couple of days. Was all mine. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to see any more videos, uh, please click on them and just go and see our interviewees. We would love to hear from you as well in the comments. So I'll see you later. Bye-bye.